Hello, my name is Svetlana. I am a mother of four children, but also I am a scientist and biobanker in Ukraine Associated of Biobank in Kharkiv, my home city. Maybe you ask now, what is a biobank? Well, let me explain. As long as there have been humans, people have guard collected things. First, human collected berries and edible plants, simply to survive. And later on, people started to collect it items such, for example, postage stamp or coins. Basically, a biobank does the same things. We also collected things, but in this case, we collected biological samples, blood and tissue for research, and new treatment can be developed. Like most women, I too have a creative mindset, which means imagining a biobank as a symphony orchestra that is work for research. In orchestra, many different musicians work together to create a perfect piece of music. The same is true for a biobank. There are many different professionals, from a doctors to editors, managers, lab technicians, cryophysics, engineering, and even biologists. They all were to work together to achieve an important goal, provide high-quality biological samples and data for research. So, what happens if your biobank suddenly finds itself in the middle of dangerous situation, like a war zone? Well, let's look at our orchestra again. As you can see, musician is still there. Even if there are fewer, now the setting and the situation has changed dramatically. But the main remains. The show must go on. War is over a tragedy. So many pictures have gone around the world in the last months. I don't want to add any more. But I also don't want to sweep the problems and, I, and event and the couple because those events have happened. Like where dozens of civilians waited the railway station in Kramatorsk, hoping to get evacuated from dangerous area. It was a journey many of a wound have made, who could have known that their journey to safety Wood and any blood buff and ballistic missiles hitting the station. I think about all the victims of the abhorrent act, about all women, all men, and especially about all children whose lives were brutality cut as they were trained to reach safety. According to United Nations, and estimated 600 children were slashed or burned to death in less than four months. Among the dead were bure newborns. The specific targeting of children is one of the grimmest new developments in how conflict have been worked out over the past 50 years. And gruesome and unthinkable incident that happens very frequently at the moment is the sexual abuse of women after the sexual assaults for as is vital to preserve biological material for forensics examination as we do not what to will happen in the future. And even if those samples cannot be matched to people they collected in the biobank evidence for the court material. So many buildings were destroyed during the bombing in Kharkiv. But we are very lucky. The biotechnology laboratory and biobanking were not. They remain unharmed at the freezer container 
the biological samples continue to function according to international standards and protocol, we are very hopeful that they will continue to remain intact. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for several clinical centers and hospital in Kharkiv. Many were destroyed or severely impacted. Many civilians, patients, and medical professionals lost their lives either during attacks or the lack of medical treatment. Just because there is war going on, it doesn't mean the disease like COVID-19, cancer, stroke, or heart attacks don't exist anymore, or that don't need to be treated. Patient must continue to receive the best possible care and as quickly as possible. But what can I do where there is long enough space the hospital because they either already full or have been so badly damaged that they can no longer be used? If there is not enough medical personnel to help the people who so disciplinary they need treatment, there is no depth, the research is important and very close to our hearts in research. But this, this anti-predictable situation we found ourselves required imagine action. We not knew we how to help where could. For this reason, our staff, the Ukraine Association of Biobank quickly converted the research laboratory of the biobank for the treatment of routine disease. Before the invasion, cancer was one of Ukrainians' most significant non-communicable disease. The repeat dis destruction of infrastructure, including hospital, particularly in the east of the country, and increasingly generous germs for patient and healthcare professional left led to loss of many cancer centers. Doctors of the Ukraine Association of Biobank who mostly work in a research start to help oncologists to operate on patients with complex cancer as a childhood cancer. Nurses in Ukraine, specifically nurses who work at our biobank in research, work and serve under very challenging condition now. Reality forces them to adapt to this circumstance, to improvise and make emergency decisions on the spot. Before the war, they had to perform routine research now. They face life and their decisions every day. In addition to working, field hospital, some nurses advanced additional training to become flight on evacuation nurses. Or nurses paid the highest price for saving lives in the form of their own health or even their life. Many of them are now disabled. Our nurses and doctors now take care of the patient every single day under very difficult and strained circumstances. But will all the hard work and struggles they have to face each day, they continue to take great care of our biobank. Their passion lies in the research and they put the heart and soul into this work like me, their hope and belief that one day the war will be over. Their hope and belief that research will one day become important for our country and its people again. And with this seem hope and faith, these doctors and nurses work how hard and with such passion to keep it all going for a better and bright future. Just like this little boy who survived a serious heart 
surgery and is now on the road to recovery. We too hope that our research will survive this war. Like this boy, we too want to survive so that we can save lives again with innovation and research and not with a scalpel in our in hand. And we'll thank you.